What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another look at the Vintage Collection. Lots of interesting sales here, mostly TVC 1.0. There were some really good deals out there that I wanted to show. And before I dig in any further, I've got two new Patreons. First, thank you to Philip Keen. Uh, he became a Patreon supporter. And of course, <clears throat> Usual Mike. That was a shocker to have Usual Mike become a Patreon supporter of my channel. I'm sure that you guys know Usual Mike. His channel is like 15 or 1600 times larger than mine. And he is kind of a breaking news specialist. And he's down in Australia. Thank you, Mike, for becoming a Patreon supporter. Appreciate both of you. I also have a super chat thanks to give out. A special thank you to Cameron Cornelius. Uh, he was very generous and sent me yet another super chat. You guys have been extremely generous with those. And I just wanted to say thank you again to Cameron for that. That you, You're uh, really kind to do that. I really appreciate that very much. All right, we got some awesome, awesome vintage collection that I wanted to go through. We're going to start with a few foils that sold. <clears throat> and this was Darth Sidious and uh, VC-12. And it was in pretty good shape. It did have a price sticker on the back, which, how do you guys feel about that? When you're leaving me a like for this video, hopefully, uh, if you see, like, the new SKU sticker, like the store sticker in the lower right-hand corner on the back, does that bother you? To me, it doesn't really bother me, okay? But I was just curious as to whether it does to you. Now, this one was the Canadian example. So that's something to keep in mind is that some of these sellers don't particularly care that it's the Canadian example. This was a seller in Canada. And there was another one I think I've got later on that was not Canadian that had a Canadian Ahsoka and didn't realize it. But, you know, this was the, the harder to find Canadian. We've talked about it in the past based on conversations with some of the other folks that know a lot more than I do about this stuff. They've all said that the Canadian examples, the Canadian cards with the French language. So, for example, the, the Boba Fett, this one is not the offer or not the error offer, but... You know, I've heard that the Canadian examples, for every one of these produced, 10 were produced in the U.S., the 10 on the U.S. card. So these multi-language are relatively, anyway, fewer in number than the U.S. examples. And uh, to me, it's just something to keep an eye on, you know, because a lot of sellers, they don't particularly care, especially if they're in Canada. That's what they're used to. But for if you're in the U.S. and you're, like, into variants and all that kind of stuff... Uh, th this is a, a nice thing to keep a tr to keep an eye on is for is Canadian sellers selling harder to find Canadian foils like this, especially the foils. You know, these were Ultimate Galactic Hunt produced for a much more limited time than the regular card backs. So just keep an eye out for these Canadian cards. So that one did sell for one hundred and twenty bucks, nine dollars shipping. That was a pretty good deal. I got several different Clone Commander Cody's that sold, and the prices are kind of all over the map. This one was a very clean example of the foil. Cody, it was listed for 180 and it sold for 160. I thought that was a really good deal for a very clean looking Cody. I mean, I didn't really see anything wrong with it. I was trying to figure out why it sold relatively cheap, but that seems like a really good price. 160 or 160 was the best offer accepted on that. Another one sold for 200. So 160 or 200. I mean, that's a massive uh, difference in price. That's a 20% delta in price. And you could make an argument that this one's not nearly as clean as the one that I just showed you. It had a couple of little nicks at the very bottom of the card back on the back. So 160 200 pick your poison. That's a pretty good price. And then here was a U.S. card punched example, of course. We've talked about that. It also did have a small crease, color-breaking crease in the lower right-hand corner. So me personally, I'm not paying 150 for that. That's what it sold for. Uh, to me, if you're going to spend 150, just wait and be patient and, and wait for one that's that doesn't have that crease. Maybe the buyer didn't realize it, but you know you got to look at those photos pretty closely. But very clearly, it's got a, a pretty bad corner crunch there. But that one still sold for 150 plus six dollars shipping. Uh, here's another foil. This was the foil Boba Fett. This one sold in an auction for 109.16. Usually in buy it now, is these typically sell for 150, maybe 125 on the low end, but usually I'd say 150. And I think the seller could have gotten a higher price if they had taken it out of the star case to actually show it in good condition. But you know, you could make an argument maybe in the lower right hand corner there might be something going on there. Hard to tell, but that's the risk you're taking when you're buying it 
where the listing only shows it inside the star case. If I'm a seller and it's in really good shape, take it out of the star case for a few photos. Otherwise, you're going to get not you're not nearly the bids on it. So that one sold for 109.16. But again, you're, you're taking some risks that it's it's not in good condition. Uh, same seller also had an unpunched VCP03 rocket firing fit. That one sold for 125 dollars. This one they did take it out of the, uh, out of the case. And it was in pretty good shape. It looks like maybe some very light edge wear at the bottom of the card. You know, probably just from rattling in, around inside that that shipper box. But that one did sell, again, for $125. That seems to be about the going rate for VCP03 now. It's really dropped in price. $125 to $150 is about the right number for that one. Uh, next up was a Revenge of the Jedi R2-D2 offer list. So I would assume that this would be the SDCC example. And this seller has four still available, and one of them did sell at $126 plus, let's call it $2 shipping. So it's about, you know, $130. And again, it's the U.S. card, unpunched, offerless, Revenge of the Jedi. So if you're looking for one of those, he's got four still available. I'll put an eBay affiliate link in the video description for this, just in case you're looking. I, I tried to find some other recent sales. I, I couldn't find any for the offerless Revenge of the Jedi from the SDCC set. Though I did find two, but there weren't many of them. One of them was at 150, and another one sold at 140. I'm sure there might be some below this offer or this list price of 126, uh, just depending on condition. So they look really clean though, and I, I don't know how this seller can get five of them available if if they were SDCC exclusive. He must have just had a ton of them. Uh, going back to Django Fett again, Django Fett continues to hold its price. This was a punched example on the U.S. card back. Again, not many photos there, no, nothing of the back, but it, it was the U.S. front. And this one sold for $150 for a punched example. So Django Fett continues to hold up really well, and that is at least the third or fourth Django Fett that I've seen sell for $150 or higher, even punched examples. So... Uh, you know, maybe it's because of the deluxe packaging. We've talked about all the all the same things. I'm not going to rehash it again, but it's it is really surprising to me how well Django Fed has held up here held up here recently. Commander Gree, this was a very nice looking U.S. unpunched card. This one did sell in an auction for 147.50. That's about right, I think. You know, that's a pretty good price. So that was a very clean looking card back for Commander Gree. And by the way, you know, I was at my daughter's volleyball game this weekend. And this young boy, he was maybe 10 or 11 years old. He starts talking to me. You know, he knows that I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, he's like, I watch your channel. Yeah. And he's like, what do you think about maybe Disney coming out with a Darth, Darth Malik or Darth Revan? You know, Old Republic. And I was like blown away that this kid was 11 years old. And so I started kind of quizzing him about this stuff. And he's like, I think the High Republic sucks. I hate it. You know, it's too woke. <laughs> it's just, it was really funny. And I asked him who his favorite characters were or character. His first favorite character was Clone Commander Cody. His second favorite character was Captain Rex. So there is hope. There is hope for us as these, as, as my generation dies off that there's going to be a younger generation that loves Star Wars and, and really knows this stuff. Because, I mean, this kid was, again, he was like 10 or 11 years old. How does he know anything about the Old Republic? <laughs> it was just, it was pretty cool. So, uh, anyway, I just I wanted to pass that along because this, this kid, was I was, blo I was blown away. I started really quizzing him about some of the intricacies. Like, he started talking about, you know, just all kinds of characters from the expanded universe that I would have no expectation whatsoever that some of these kids would know anything about. So I thought that was cool. Next up, here, going back to what I was talking about. So this seller is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he didn't know it, but this was the Canadian Ahsoka. It was a punched example, and it was not perfect by any means. You can see a little faint crease at the top of the hang tab and maybe some litho wear. So again, this was not a perfect example, but it was the Canadian example of VC-102 Ahsoka. It was listed for $190. He took $158 for that. This is the first issue Canadian Ahsoka. So there are deals out there and there are sellers that are either not aware. Now, this one did have some issues, okay? The very top, it wasn't much. It was just at the very top there, but it was the Canadian example. 
you know, it's probably, let's call it an 80. You know, it, 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 there it is. There, there's some faint, faint creases at the top there by the hang tab. So it, it was not perfect. Was 158 fair for this? I, I, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, maybe you could have gotten even more off. I don't know. But I, I, I just was trying to emphasize that you got to keep an eye out for some of these sellers that don't even know. The first thing I always look for is EDOT. As soon as I see that in the upper left-hand corner for TBC 1.0, then my ears perk up uh, in terms of like Patreon alerts and things like that, because you know, there might be a, a good deal to be had on some of these. And I found a few over the years. There was like a Canadian Luke Skywalker Death Star Escape, and it was Canadian unpunched, and it was mint, and it was like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. So they do pop up from time to time. Now, that one did have some issues, admittedly, so I don't know if it was worth $158, but, I, you know, it's just it's just worth pointing out that some sellers don't know it. Here, this seller, I think this seller might be a channel watcher or a subscriber. I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say anything. But, you know, he, he always has some really nice TBC at auction. And he sold three here recently. This was Bastilla Sean 1.0 version, unpunched. And, again, this is something that only Juan Kenobi has talked about, how much this one has dropped. Uh, this is the prototype FET offer sticker. Bastilla Sean, U.S. card, unpunched. That one sold for 83 bucks, so that one's really come down. Star Killer, the first issue Star Killer, that one sold for $80. I mean, wow, it's just crazy how much some of these beauties have come down. And then finally, the same seller also had a U.S. card, original issue Republic Trooper from the Expanded Universe or Old, old Republic Republic Trooper. Beautiful, unpunched U.S. card. That one sold for $75. So there are some really good deals out here to be had for some of these where the reissue has really bitten into the original the original TVC 1.0 price. Uh, next up was Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is one that's really held up pretty well despite the reissue. And uh, if anything, I, th I think I feel like it, this one's gone back up again. Uh, this was an unpunched VC 103 first issue. That one sold for 130 So... Uh, you know, again, I, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why that is, but this one is maybe bucked the trend in terms of the reissues really hurting the 1.0 version. And uh, that one, I, I think, is a good example of that. Next up, Princess Leia Bespin outfit. It was a punched example, um, and that one sold for $99. I feel like for, for VC 111, unpunched, it's, it's usually like 125 to 150 so... Uh, to you know, this one had some edge wear at the bottom. I mean, to me, I'd rather spend an extra twenty or thirty bucks. Maybe I'm wrong on that number, but to me, I th I feel like if you spend just a little bit more money, you can get one in better shape and unpunched versus this one. But maybe I'm wrong. Next up, I've got some graded items to finish things off. This was the Nabu Pilot, and I wanted to talk about the Nabu Nabu Pilot because one of y'all mentioned that this is one from the very last wave of TVC 1.0 that was an online exclusive. Because in my last video, last week's video, I was like, why is the Nabu Pilot so expensive? Well, this was kind of one of the duds from TVC 1.0, the last one. I think it was Gary Moore or maybe Mark C that, that mentioned this. And um, thank you for sharing that information. But anyway, I didn't realize that this was one from that really awesome last TVC 1.0 wave that was an online exclusive with, uh, let's see, it had Prune Face, uh, maybe the Emperor's Royal Guard, and, uh, oh, God, I care. My memory's not working. Pr Prune Face, Emperor's Royal Guard, Nian Nam, maybe? And I, I'm guessing Ahsoka. I'm, <laughs> I'm just guessing. But anyway, this Naboo Pilot um, was an AFA 9.0, and that one did sell for $165. So uh, that one is an expensive one, even though it's kind of like a you know generic character, so to speak. But 9.0 graded, $165. And then I had a few more recent releases that sold. This was an uncirculated 9.25, The Child. I'm not sure if you guys saw the recent news but Disney did announce that they are coming out with a movie called The Mandalorian and Grogu. Hope it's good. It, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to tie into the end of, se of the last season of Mandalorian, the end of Ahsoka, and probably tie some of those loose ends together. And, you know, they'll probably rescue Ahsoka and the rest of the Rebels from, you know, uh, f from that planet where... <laughs> where Thrawn has now entered recent kind of events. You know, they basically switched places, which was kind of the only disappointing portion 
of the Ahsoka series, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm assuming that the Mandalorian and maybe Eris and Dula, I don't know, Sabine Wren. Sabine's with, no, Sabine is with Ezra Bridger now. Uh, so I'm assuming they're going to rescue Ezra Bridger and, and, and Sabine Wren and bring them back. And then they'll probably have some grand finale or grand battle against Grand Admiral Thrawn in that movie. You know, that's my guess as to what happens. But they, but Disney did announce a movie called The Mandalorian and Grogu. And, you know, they've, they've announced a lot of stuff that hasn't actually come out yet. So we'll see if it happens. But anyway, this this one did sell. This was VC-184, uncirculated 9.2, that, 9.25. That one sold for $180. And then here are some other recent reissues. This was an uncirculated 9.25 week way. I do love that 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi logo, man. That is just awesome. That one sold for $125. The seller had two of those. Both of them did sell. Uh, the Arc Trooper Lambent Seeker, uncirculated 9.0. Those sold. That seller had two of those for $85 plus $10 shipping. I'm always a little surprised that these Arc Troopers didn't do better. These kind of gaming greats Arc Troopers, especially the, the Arc Trooper Lambent Seeker. He was my favorite. But people just didn't seem to care about him. And then finally was Zutton, uncirculated 9.25. That sold in an auction for $77 and change. So nothing crazy on those, but... I wanted to at least point those out since those were recent sales. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at uh, this look at recent sales for the Vintage Collection. Thank you again to Usual Mike. And obviously, if you're not a subscriber already to his channel, go check out Usual Mike. I'm sure all of you are at this point. Uh, and then also thank you to Philip Keen for becoming Patreons. And then finally, again, thank you so much to Cameron Cornelius for the super chat. You have been extremely generous with your supers. So... Uh, thanks again for watching. Please leave a like, and I'll be back soon.